Okay, what's going on guys? Mark Luckenball with Local Client Takeover here. Today I want to go over four more ways we can get verified maps listings. Super easy, super seamless, super scalable. Okay, so let's just pull up my reference sheet here. The first thing we have, uh, you know, sites like Craigslist, Backpage. Um, you guys can do a ton with these. Okay, you basically can go to whatever area you need listings in and to be honest once you guys see my my extra video you won't it doesn't matter if you have listings there or not so you could scale this where you just um you just get verified listings wherever you can get them and then you can move them around as you please so you know basically you go to sites like this and, and we want to use copy like get paid to receive mail from Google you know we're paying people 50 bucks to receive one piece of mail from Google um you can definitely get your listings flagged you know people are gonna flag the hell out of your listings because you're using Google uh, you're kind of you, you know there there could be some confusion as to whether you are Google or aren't so you could get some flagged listings out of this but at the end of the day you can find a ton of people that you know for 20 25 50 bucks will definitely get a postcard you don't pay the people until they send you the code you type it in and Google verifies it that way you know no one gets paid until um on until the listings actually verified that way you know they did it um everything's good and you know it's a super easy way just to get a ton uh, i know just the last local client playbook episode joe mentioned this uh, it's a lot of people um you know a lot of people disregard using craigslist and backpage but you can mine a ton a ton of verified listings out of this and you can get them really cheap you know like i said a lot of people will do it for 20 to 50 bucks a piece and it's as easy as that and you don't have to be too crazy about where you're getting them verified at because in the next video I'm actually going to show you guys how it just doesn't matter as long as you have the listing you can do whatever you want with it okay second a lot of people disregard friends and family and you know I think they do that mostly because um, everyone's under the assumption that you need to have the listing verified in your client city or the city you want to make the listing in and that's just not true so probably one of the easiest ways you can do this is you know just hit up your Facebook hit up all you know a bunch of your close friends or family on Facebook and you know ask them if you send them a postcard from Google if they can send you the code and this is a super easy way like I like I talked about in a previous video if you want to really like create an inventory of verified listings you know this is a super easy way to create 10 20 50 100 you know different verified listings you have sitting around so if you need one to wow a client or you know you want to test uh, you know you want to test out a new paper lead local niche and you just want to throw up a quick listing and rank it you know this is a really nice way to kind of have a reserve and like I said it doesn't really matter where they're located at we'll go over that in the next video but you know definitely leverage the heck out of your friends and family and you know it's a really quick way to drum up a ton of listings neighbors friends family you know fellow professionals whatever you know it, it's it's really simple <laughs> really straight to the point um virtual offices you know a lot of people say to stay away from them google has you know all of them in a database and they're not going to work anymore but the problem with that is you know there's a lot of legitimate companies that use virtual offices for you know a ton of different reasons so as of now they work great you know a lot of people say don't use UPS stores even though you know they give you a real looking address Google has them all you know that they, they're in their database you know you can't use them but um you know that's just not true I I do agree it might not be the most sustainable future proof but they've been working for a long time and they still work as of me recording this video uh, another thing people talk about is not using the mainstream virtual offices like they don't want you to use Regis they don't want you to use you know the, the really popular ones and that's just not entirely true either you know as of making this video there's a t <laughs> we have a ton of virtual offices listings made with Regis that are still ranking still working great to this day so I also threw in a resource here I, you guys can have this link it is basically a 
ton of different, almost a hundred different uh, virtual offices run through here. You know, like I say, it's it's always nice to diversify. You know, so if you want to make a hundred listings, you know, may, maybe maybe only make two listings per you know 50 locations you know that way you're well diversified and you know if Google would say hey we have an entire database of Regis listings and we're going to you know penalize all of these that are in our maps you know I, I don't know how <laughs> how likely that even is but you know in worst case skyfall scenario that happens you know you only lose two listings rather than a hundred you know anything when anything with SEO no matter how white hat or black hat you think you're being diversification is always going to be a, always going to be the the key to sustainability and last but not least uh, you know there's still a lot of people that don't know this but calling Google is a surefire way to get you know nine out of ten times they will phone verify you on the spot and what you do here is you follow the exact same video that my video from week one about creating a, the the fictitious location you know really taking you know a lot of due diligence taking your time and really making an intelligent selection and building the profile out you know to make it look real and what you do is you request the code and you don't have to do anything you don't have to forward an address you don't have to go through any trouble you put your fictitious address in request the postcard and you know give it you know 10 to 21 days sometimes you know it's nice to just give it past the 14 days that way they don't say oh well it it'll might be there tomorrow call back you know you can actually you know I, I'm pretty sure Google still tells you it could be four, up to 14 days. So on the 15th day, you call Google. You tell them, you know, you're at your new location and, you know, you've been having tr trouble getting your mail and, you know, you never got the postcard. And like I said, guys, 9 out of 10 times, they'll verify your listing on the spot over the phone. And that's all there is to it. So, you know, these are definitely... You know, these might not sound like the most innovative ways in the world to start getting uh, locations, but, you know, it's definitely a foundation. You know, for instance, if you use the virtual office just for the initial verification and then you use the tactics from my next video to move the location so you can have a verified business across the country or in a different city in the same state, it doesn't matter, you know, then you can kind of start uh you know you can start getting away from that virtual office address or or whatever guys it's just um you know it's just four really solid tactics to get that initial verification if you decide to let it where it's at there's no problem with it you can do that if you want to move it you can do that as well but you know so just to recap quickly you know you can jump over to sites like Craigslist and Backpage there you know for twenty dollars to fifty dollars they're gonna there's gonna be troves of people you know willing to take a postcard from Google and send you um, send you the code and if you guys want to use virtual offices they still work great they're gonna work great for a long time to come and you know I wanted to give you guys a massive list of them don't forget to leverage neighbors friends family etc and worse comes to worse you know you just want to get a verified listing and you don't want to do anything else have them send the piece of mail and call them after 14 days tell them you know you've been having issues at your new location getting mail can they help you out nine times out of ten whoever's on the phone they'll verify it right on the spot and you'll be good to go alright guys I'll catch you in the next one thanks a lot Hey, what's going on, guys? Mark Luckenbaugh with Local Client Takeover here. Today, I want to go on my MapMaker rant. Now, I'm sure a few of you heard of Google MapMaker before. This was and most likely will be in the future a method to create tons of listings, you know, map listings. And it got shut down not long ago because of this, in case. No one. In case any of you missed this, um, someone went into MapMaker and manipulated this location's service areas to depict a large Android robot pissing on the Apple logo. Now it's this is this is why you know this is one thing that kind of sucks about our industry because you know in a in a lot of cases there isn't any type of real barrier of entry okay anyone can you know start doing this type of stuff and 
you have things like this happen instead of people applying their knowledge and using you know using their ability to manipulate map maker and, and you know leveraging that application you know for money to, to make money to provide services to businesses or their own business um, they do things like this and put Google in a situation where they had to pull the plug on it to avoid stuff like this in the future um, you know as of now, Google says they are going to reintroduce MapMaker. Unless they completely revamp the infrastructure of MapMaker, we'll be able to use MapMaker to manipulate uh, Black Hat listings in the future. Uh, as of right now, if you go to MapMaker, um, there's there's no editing. If you try to edit, um, you can put it place anywhere, and it'll tell you MapMaker is temporarily unavailable for editing. If you go to learn more, they are, you know, they said they were going to have an update around mid-June. We're, you know, we're in July already. So, you, you know, it, it's going to take them a while. I heard they were three or four years uh, backed up on support tickets for MapMaker. So, you know, just that alone lets us know that, you know, they're going to they're gonna try to seriously get some th their ducks in a row before they release it. But, um... You know, as of now, it's disabled. This is exactly how I was getting my instant listings. Um, you know, we had we have one other way we're getting instant listings, and they don't last. Okay, they're getting they're getting taken back down within a few hours. So I'm I'm not even going to go over that until we figure out a way to make it more sustainable. But uh, I have a bunch uh, a bunch of other ways to get um, to get listings approved without having a real address so I am gonna share those I'm it's probably have about you know five four or five other really solid tactics that have been working they've been sustainable so I wanna go over that you know I'm really disappointed I, I can't really go through my map maker stuff right now but you know everyone that participated as soon as map maker comes back you know I'm going to uh, I'm going to run through how we do it and I will let you all in on that okay um, basically it had to do what what I did was I, I used a lot of localized proxies and made a ton of different accounts and then if you go into you know if you go back into map maker people are doing um, you, you know people are doing different edits as you can see and what you do is you have one account making um, you know normal edits stuff that's right you know you're making you know minor alterations and then you're using another account behind a local proxy to say yes these changes are correct okay so it starts to validate a profile and as you can see up here once you have a ton of edits you start to actually age your account it becomes a trustworthy account and we were using you know we were using these accounts to get the instant verified listings by adding um, up here add new place you could add the new place to the map and then we use a few localized proxies to like validate that new listing we go are these changes correct yes so it was an aged account with a ton of approved edits that you know was making the listings and we were churning them out you know as many as we needed so that's basically, you, you know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if conceptually everything's going to be the same or completely different. Um, I am confident if they do reopen MapMaker, there, there will be holes to exploit. Um, just because, like I said, that with the way it's set up with kind of like the, uh, the, the crowdsource map making, if, you know, if they completely eliminate that, they're completely revamping the infrastructure. And I'm just not sure if that's what they're going to do or not. So I wanted to just take a couple minutes to walk you through what we were doing. Um, the possibility that's what we might be able to do in the future. And, you know, just kind of let you guys know if and when they open the map maker, we're going to... Uh, we're going to put you guys in on 
you, you know, the new tactics will make sure they're tried, true, and tested before we release it. And you'll all be grandfathered into that. We do apologize. Um, at this point, we do not have an ins a, a way to a sustainable way to instantly create and verify listings. But I do have a ton of kick-ass ways I'll show you. Um, you know, there, there's quite a few ways to get uh, verifications without any address, and I'll put you guys in on that. So, thanks a lot, guys. Hey, what's going on guys? Mark Luckenball with Local Client Takeover here. Today I want to go over one of the easiest ways you're going to get a verified maps listing, okay? And that is by using the USPS website to register a change of address from your um, fictitious business listing to your wherever you get mail and setting the listing up with Google, having them send a verification um, card it gets forwarded through the uh, United States Postal Service to the new address you have your pin number you verify it is that easy uh, this is <laughs> this has been working for years it'll never stop working as long as you know Google does uh, postcard verifications via snail mail and it is super easy the cool thing about this is um you know I want to show you guys as we go because this is a super basic tactic but I want to show you guys as we go how you can leverage this to actually have um you know a bunch of listings ready to get verified immediately for new customers for new clients because you know that was initially the main sale of the map maker thing hey can we get you a, a fast listing fast you know sorry to be redundant but you know it's great for clients so you know you can also use this um, use this with another tactic I have that'll actually allow you to kind of have an inventory of map listings ready to ready to go for your clients whenever you need them so that is super cool so basically um, you're gonna go to USPS.com you're gonna jump right up here to track and manage down to forward mail okay we're gonna change our address this is very simple you're gonna fly through this you acknowledge the statements you're gonna do a temporary um, you can start forwarding whenever to whenever doesn't really matter um, let's just say we'd start you know on July 7th and we'll forward to I don't know October 30th like I said guys doesn't really matter uh, we'll do the business and continue right here you know you choose your business name whatever that would be uh, San Antonio whoops water soaps damage pros um, your old address this is gonna be the address we choose but before you guys even d jump too deep into this go back to week one and watch my video on how to choose the perfect fictitious address and follow all those steps and make sure your listings are complete make sure they look real you know we want to avoid uh, Google banning these accounts if at all possible you know so put put a little extra into them okay put a little extra in make sure they look good they look legitimate and um, you know if we use that that same uh, that same example if I could spell you know if we do uh, the Ritterman Plaza okay and you go through all this it's it's very basic so you're gonna put your your um okay <laughs> Apologies about that. Can't remember what the zip code was, but basically, wh whatever address you make, you put your fictitious address in the old address. Your new address is obviously wherever you're going to get the mail. Okay, that can be a PO box, it can be a, a home address, another business address, a friend's address, family's address. Doesn't really matter. Um, you know, wherever wherever you're gonna get this mail forwarded to you're gonna enter your contact I, I'm not gonna actually put my address in okay the identity check you're, you're gonna do uh, you know they're gonna charge your card and whatnot um, it's, it's not a big deal you're gonna run through that and you're done that's all there is to it once you have this in place all you're gonna do is, is um, you're gonna go back and you're gonna verify your Google account you're gonna have them send the postcard they're gonna send the postcard to whatever 
you know old address you put in here it's going to forward to here and whenever you guys you know get the postcard you just enter the code and you're going to have a verified listing guys it's as simple as that it's a very very easy way to do this um this has been around for years and like i said it's it's probably not going to go anywhere anytime soon unless Google completely eliminates the snail mail verification, which, you know, I, I don't think they're going to do that because that could open up an entire new can of worms. So, you know, it's very basic, guys. This is a super short video because this is a super short tactic and it's a surefire way to get, you know, just an unlimited amount of verified Google Maps. Now, again, I know, you know, a lot of you are probably sitting here like, wow, okay, well, we knew this or we heard of this before. So in another video, I'm going to show you, you know, how once you choose whichever, you know, verification process you want or, you know, you want to start scaling this or you want to use this, you know, when you have a client on the phone to say, hey, you know, I can get you a map listing so fast or whatever. You know, I, in another in the next video, I want to show you guys how to actually use that to be able to still do some pretty ninja stuff. So, you know, we'll we'll get to that in the next one. But you know, this is real easy, guys. You go to the USPS.com. Um, you know, you go to the forwarded mail, the temporary move option, enter your old address, the new one, and shoot back to Google. Once this is all done, once you have your once you have the redirect in place, shoot back to Google, have them send a postcard, and you'll get it at your home or office or wherever the wherever you input here. Type the code in, you have a verified listing. You can get them all day. Thanks, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? Mark Luckenball here. Today, I want to go over how we can move any of our listings to wherever we want. So, this is kind of how you can start building an inventory of listings. Uh, the major caveat is once we move these listings to the new address, we're going to be limited on what type of edits we can do. So, make sure any optimization and edits you want done were done for the new address or the new location you're going to move these listings to before you move it. So, you know, something we like to do is is to put in there like a little spiel about moving to our new location. You know, we're having our grand opening at our new location, something like that. Something where if it gets manually reviewed, you know, it it, it it's going to look like you're not, you know, doing this for SEO reasons. It looks like you're not totally, just completely full of shit. So, uh, Basically, what we're going to do, we're going to go to google.com forward slash maps again, and you're pretty much just going to throw whatever list, whatever listing you made, um, whether you just search by address or you know the actual business name, what have you. Uh, that doesn't really matter. So basically, you know, you're going to search for for that. Then you're going to drop right down here to suggest an edit. Just give that a second to load. And right here in the address, you're going to click that. And right now, you can enter the correct address. Okay? So, you know, you can make this something simple as, you know, if you're staying in the same state, you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Whatever, uh, whatever you want to do. So, you're going to basically add your new address in here and click Submit. And they're going to review the changes, and it it can take a it can take a couple of days for it to get done. Keep in mind, in heavily spammed or heavily policed uh, industries, you're going to experience you know a lot more trouble than others. So this one should move pretty easily. Uh, something like locksmiths, movers, roofers, stuff like that. It's not going to be. <laughs> that's that's just not going to happen quite as easily. You know, they're they're going to probably get manually reviewed, and you know, there's there's just a whole list of issues you can run into dealing with that. So, you know, that that's basically all there is to it. So you can drop your address in here, whatever it is, or the name of the listing. You search it, suggest an edit and you're just moving this address to the new location. That, that's all there is to it. Um, it'll take a few days to get done, and that is it. It's that easy. And if you, if you guys listen to my other videos, you know, I gave you guys a ton of ways to get these listings verified. And now, you know, if you go ahead and verify 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 of them, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can actually have a slight inventory of these listings. And, you know, then if you want to use them for, uh, 
you know, a lead gen or to, to kind of impress a client or, you know, I know some of you have clients that, you know, are outside the city, you want to try to get them a location, you know, closer to the center of the city, stuff like that. You know, you can throw this together really quick. Just remember to go in and optimize for the new location before you suggest the edit. Uh, make sure you're suggesting the edit through a, uh, you know, uh, geo geographically um, local proxy that keeps it natural looking and uh, you know that's basically all you need to keep in mind and that's it's as simple as that you can move listings all around and within a few days your um, the edit should be approved keep in mind when you're moving it to a new location we we want to go back and and do the Google Maps, uh, the Google location selector, just like I showed in the first video. Nothing changed there. If you go to move it to a location that just doesn't look like a business move there or will ever move there, you're not going to get approved. And that's just all there is to it in a nutshell. And you could potentially jeopardize the account you did the edit with. And you know that that's kind of it's a bit theoretical, but. You know, it's better safe than sorry. Make sure you do your due diligence and your research. And, you know, as many locations as you would like, you can do this for. Move them around, get them approved in the new area. It's very simple. It's usually just within a few days. And like with anything with Google, there's going to be hits and misses. There is, you know, we have, we have massive success with this. You know, there are going to be the one or two times out of ten where it might not work. And a lot of that's going to be based on, you know, did you did you perform plenty of research? You know, is it is the new address like realistic looking? Is it a real you know business there? And another will be the actual niche you're in. So if it's you know something like locksmith or movers where it's just really heavily moderated by Google, you're you're gonna have a lot more you know trouble getting those type of listings moved around or verified, whatever. So something to keep in mind and if you guys have any questions let me know thanks a lot hey what's going on guys mark luckenball with local client takeover here just uh... moving forward on the black hat maps week today i want to show you guys two more techniques on how to get verified listings um... the first way this one i'm going to show you is pretty cut and dry uh... the only issue with it is the verification process is pretty fast but you you know it can take a little while to actually gain control of the listing so this works best if you're making you know verified listings for just paper lead sites you just want to get that geographically relevant signal from Google quick fast and in a hurry stuff like that um, it's also going to do really well in low comp areas where you know you don't need the the, the the over the top optimization to be able to rank you know just having the listing and some citations are going to do it and it's really going to help that you know with whatever you do here if, you know it's d sometimes dangerous to keyword stuff but in this instance it's you know going to be a positive just because like i said it takes a little while to get actual control of the listing so we're going to start by throwing um going to google.com forward slash maps we're going to jump straight to the address here and remember before we move forward um go back to week one look how we got the phone number and the address for businesses that don't actually exist super important especially after the map maker debacle Google and its moderators and its admin team are just looking for listings that don't look real to flag they're deleting listings left and right um, you can still get a ton of black hat listings verified some you're gonna lose some of them it's it's the nature of the beast guys so you know one way to kind of mitigate or, or at least offset the statistics in your favor is to make sure you run through my video and dot your I's and cross your T's as you can see right here just in the street view and if, if you rewatch my video and how we can to this address you know it looks like an industrial or a commercial area it looks like it's a lot of a uh, lot of businesses a lot of offices a lot of warehouses so it makes sense that there'd be um, businesses here so you know something to keep in mind guys make sure you do your due diligence on getting this address it's very important okay and uh, again I don't want you guys to you know overcomplicate this either because at the end of the day you know we've stuck these we've stuck these businesses inside existing businesses before and they're they're still in existence today so you know it's it's just it's damage control you know I'm not saying you guys can't just 
hold one hand over your eyes, pick a random address and get it verified fast because you can. But, you know, the, the way we like to do it, it's, it's just a little bit safer. You know, it's a little bit more sustainable and, you know, it's, it's not as much of a roll of the dice if it's going to get verified or not. So basically, you know, once you move over to your address, wherever you're at in the world, it's going to zoom into that. You're going to go right here to add a missing business. This is real simple here, guys. Um, you know, we're going to add the name, whoops, which our business name is goofy, but it's okay. Okay. Something to remember on the category. There's not a ton of categories in here. Okay. This like, you know, this isn't like doing it through the, my business where there's a, um, a ton of different categories to choose from. It's just not, you know, so what I like to do is just go with store. And once, if you're trying to gain control of this listing in the future, which you, you know you can, um, that's going to be uh, that's something you can edit at that time. But adding the listing like this isn't that big of a deal. Um, the phone number we're gonna add, we're gonna add the number that uh, our tracking number. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sound like a Neanderthal there. And we're gonna throw the website in. Okay, and we're submitting it. Okay, so basically, it's uh, that that's all there is to it. You're gonna submit it. Um, it, it can take uh, it can definitely take a few days to get it verified, but you know it works. Uh, one more thing, I I wanted to add. I should have added this right in the beginning. Um, when you saw me in the beginning of week one, where I was getting uh, geo-targeted proxies, geo-specific proxies, and making accounts. That's really important here. You want to make sure the account you makes uh, local to this area, if that makes sense. So when you go through the, your your proxy that you use to make the Gmail that you're logging in with, your proxy should be a San Antonio or at least a Texas proxy. So make sure you're going back to week one, rewatching the videos on how to get the address, how to get the geolocal proxies, and you know, so make make sure you don't skip that part, guys. It's really important. It's it's gonna start looking uh it's gonna look really weird. Not to say it never happens, but it's gonna look really weird if uh your main Google account or, you know, a Google account in the United Kingdom is doing a bunch of updates all over the United States with new businesses. Okay, it can start to make a footprint. So, you know, make sure you have uh, your geo-specific accounts that you're doing geo-specific updates with, okay? We don't want to add businesses in Texas from, you know, locations in P Pennsylvania, okay? So, make sure you're keeping that in mind. So, real simple recap here, guys. Rewatch the week one video on how to get the address, the phone number, and the geo targeted proxies. Log into your Google account through your local proxy, whether it's and as close as possible. You can get San Antonio from that site I gave you, you can get Texas from the site I gave you, or wherever your state is, wherever your city is. You know, get it as close and as specific and as relevant as possible. Log in through that and just add the information and it should be up to it um, excuse me it should be verified within a few days and once it's verified you can go in and you know we can we can cover this in the future you can actually go in and go to claim the listing as the owner and that's the reason I use the tracking number right off the bat is um, unless you're in a heavily police niche like locksmith roofing movers etc you'll be able to go in nine times out of ten and phone verify through your tracking number so really solid stuff just one more time I don't mean to sound like a broken record make sure you're going back how to get the how to come up with the address how to get the local proxies how to get the phone number how to set the phone number up make sure when people call that phone number it's going to your recording for your business okay cuz uh, Google mods and, and stuff they're definitely on this right now so you need to make that's why I stress that so hard in the beginning too we need to make sure we have our eyes dotted and our T's crossed if we want this stuff to work so that's basically it for that tactic 
Um, as soon as it's verified, or even before in some cases, you can start building your citations, and it's an awesome signal for your lead gen sites. It makes your lead gen site look like an actual local site. Really good thing to have, okay? So next I want to talk about a really cool tactic that is a lot slower to happen, okay? This, this definitely takes some time. Um, you know, if you're looking for the instant gratification of a couple day verification, this is not going to work for you. But basically, if you are not a Yext partner, you should look into it. I know everyone might, uh, oh, everyone might light torches and gather pitchforks and come after me for that. But the truth of the matter is, Yext offers a ton of really cool services, and it's not super expensive if you really, if you really want to get it done. I know people talk about Yex taking listings away and stuff like that. You know, I, I'm just not sure how they used to do business. Um, I've never had Yex take any of my listings away, and I just don't think that would be a model they'd stick with and grow like they did, if that makes sense. It's kind of unethical. So, basically, this does cost some money, but... If you go and spend the uh, the thirty five dollar a month package or three fifty for the year, you can save some money. No need to do that. You can do the thirty five dollar a month once you're a partner. Um, it's gonna add you to all these aggregators. So basically, just a really quick, you know, and this this isn't gonna be a super like in depth thing because you know it's it's not always the best way for us to do things. But if you are a partner, you can definitely use this and move forward with it. I guess what I'm saying is if you're not already a Yex partner, it's maybe you shouldn't spend the seven hundred bucks if you're just gonna the seven hundred a year membership fee if you're just going to use it to get map listings once in a while because you know the other ways I showed you are just a lot faster to do to, to get listings. So you know keep that in mind guys if if this just you know if this just super isn't up your alley then there's then you don't want to do it, but at the same time, um, you know, you can use this concept for a lot of different things. So basically, what Google is is a giant scraper. At the end of the day, Google scrapes sites on the internet, puts them in its index. You know, it 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 indexes them, and then it has a series of algorithms that decide, you know, when people make certain queries into their index, what they're going to serve as a result. But at the end of the day, Google is just a giant scraper, and you'll find this, you know, when you do searches and the knowledge graph pops up, Google's just scraping different sites and trying to deliver you the best content. So what we can do to really trick Google into giving us a, a, a maps listing is to get a listing on all of these sites. So you can use the Yex partnership and you're going to want to use your tracking number because when it comes in to claim the listing, like I said, if you're not in a heavily policed niche, 9 out of 10 times you're going to approve it right through your tracking number. So basically, once once you're listing your, your, your fake address, your tracking number, your fake business, once it populates into these sites, and they have it for a ton of sites, um, once it populates onto these sites, Google is going to scrape it. And this this can take several weeks, guys. This can take 10 to, 10 to 21 days. But once you're on these sites, you're going to get a maps listing. Okay? And Google is going to make it, and Google is going to have it in its index. And what you can do then is search for your business in Google, and <laughs> it's going to be an on-claim listing. And like I said, unless you're in a really heavily spam niche, 9 out of 10 times you're going to be able to claim the listing through your tracking number on the spot. So, you know, it's nothing super crazy right there. But, you know, this is also a good place to get a bunch of sites, you know, uh, the TomTom the Tom and, you know, the different, uh, you know, not a lot of people talk about the GPS sites and the Apple Maps and, you know, a lot of people laugh about it, but these are these are super authoritative aggregators that scrape a bunch of places for their info and allow and they get scraped for their info. So just any anything extra to kind of push the the um, geographically uh, real <laughs> the <laughs> the real business and the real address to Google the better. So 
you know, this is a really simple way. You run, you know, you run through a, uh, you start a campaign in your Yaks partnership dashboard. And like I said, within 10, 21 days, usually you have a listing you can go in and claim. So, you know, it's definitely not the shortest way, the easiest way, but hopefully it also gives some more insight into how Google, you know, delivers results and puts things in its index. You know, it's basically just a big scraper. And if nothing else, you can at least go to this page and it gives you a bunch of ideas for good targeted spots to get your business on that, you know, you might not have thought about previously. So hopefully this helps, guys. Thanks a lot. Hey, what's up, guys? Mark Luckenball here. Today I want to go over how we can move any of our listings to wherever we want. So this is kind of how you can start building an inventory of listings. Uh, the major caveat is once we move these listings to the new address, we're going to be limited on what type of edits we can do. So make sure any optimization and edits you want done, we're done for the new address or the new location you're going to move these listings to before you move it. So, you know, something we like to do is, is to put in there like a little spiel about moving to our new location. You know, we're having our grand opening at our new location, something like that. Something where if it gets manually reviewed, you know, it, it, it it's going to look like you're not, you know, doing this for SEO reasons. It looks like you're not totally, just completely full of shit. So, uh, basically what we're going to do, we're going to go to google.com forward slash maps again. And you're pretty much just going to throw whatever, list, whatever listing you made. Um whether you just search by address or you know the actual business name what have you uh, d doesn't really matter so basically you know you you're gonna search for for that then you're gonna drop right down here to suggest an edit just give that a second to load and right here in the address you're gonna click that and right now you can enter the correct address okay so, you know, you can make this something simple as, you know, if you're staying in the same state, you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Whatever, uh, whatever you want to do. So, you're going to basically add your new address in here and click submit. And they're going to review the changes and it, it can take a, it can take a couple of days for it to get done. Keep in mind in heavily spammed or heavily policed uh, industries, you're going to experience, you know, a lot more trouble than others. So this one should move pretty easily. Uh, something like locksmiths, movers, roofers, stuff like that. It's not going to be, <laughs> that's, that's just not going to happen quite as easily. You know, they're, they're going to probably get manually reviewed and, you know, there's, there's just a whole list of issues you can run into dealing with that. So, you know, that, that's basically all there is to it. So you can drop your address in here, whatever it is, or the name of the listing. You search it, suggest an edit, and you're just moving this address to the new location. That, that's all there is to it. Um, it'll take a few days to get done, and that is it. It's that easy. And if you if you guys listen to my other videos, you know I gave you guys a ton of ways to get these listings verified. And now you know if you go ahead and verify 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 of them, doesn't really matter. You know you can actually have a slight inventory of these listings. And you know then if you want to use them for a, you know a lead gen or to, to kind of impress a client or you know I know some of you have clients that you know, outside the city, you want to try to get them a location, you know, closer to the center of the city, stuff like that, you know, you can throw this together really quick. Just remember to go in and optimize for the new location before you suggest the edit. Uh, make sure you're suggesting the edit through a, uh, you know, uh, geo geographically um, local proxy that keeps it natural looking. And, uh, you know, that's basically all you need to keep in mind. And that's it's as simple as that. You can move listings all around. And within a few days, you're, um, the edit should be approved. Keep in mind, when you're moving it to a new location, we, we want to go back and, and do the Google Maps, uh, the Google Location Selector, just like I showed in the first video. 
nothing changed there. If you go to move it to a location that just doesn't look like a business move there or will ever move there, you're not going to get approved. And that's just all there is to it in a nutshell. And you could potentially jeopardize the account you did the edit with. And, you know, that that's kind of, it's a bit theoretical, but, you know, it's better safe than sorry. Make sure you do your due diligence and your research. And, you know, as many locations as you would like, you can do this for. Move them around, get them approved in the new area. It's very simple. It's usually just within a few days. And like with anything with Google, there's going to be hits and misses. There is, you know, we have, we have massive success with this. You know, there are going to be the one or two times out of ten where it might not work. And a lot of that's going to be based on, you know, did you did you perform plenty of research? You know, is it is the new address like realistic looking? Is it a real you know business there? And another will be the actual niche you're in. So if it's you know something like locksmith or movers where it's just really heavily moderated by Google, you're you're going to have a lot more you know trouble getting those type of listings moved around or verified, whatever. So something to keep in mind. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Thanks a lot.